Hey, uh, Richard, welcome to the Airstream. I'm uh, kind of curious about, you know, I saw you and a lot of guys you played with, all the people you played with, all Indianapolis folks. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, without hopefully not offending, I was like, I don't think it, I couldn't even uh, hear an Indianapolis scene, music scene in my mm -hmm. head, you yeah. know. So how would you describe it to someone who's never been? Someone's coming to visit. They want to take in some music. What's the scene like there? Um, well, I'm not sure for the last couple of years because I've been kind of transplanted. I've been in Chicago, but went um, for the 25 years I lived there. Um, it's very grimy. It's a bunch of people living in kind of um, basements and, and houses on the outskirts of downtown that are kind of run down. Um, I think there are great, great bands there. It's not a lot of them don't get out very often, so it, so a lot of people don't know about some of the bands there. Um, but there's also two colleges that are really close, IU and and uh, Ball State. So uh, an hour north and an hour south, you also have these pockets of music that kind of migrates to Indianapolis when those kids graduate or when they're there for the weekends to play shows so um i would describe it as grimy and um and and good yeah grimy and good yeah um <coughs> do you think I, I i don't know you may not want to talk about this but do you think somebody an artist should be able to uh, be allowed to change the whole lineup of their band and not have to explain why absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i wouldn't have asked alex chilton why sister lovers didn't have all those people on it, you know just yeah i mean i'd gladly tell people why but um i won't even go yeah. i mean I, that, <laughs> I wasn't fishing for that i know yeah, that's yeah. a question you've had to field a lot but uh -huh. I, I just wonder if you're like sometimes like i shouldn't have to answer that no i mean i understand why people ask you know but it, but it also comes usually from people that didn't really understand how the band worked anyway which wasn't really eight people all in a room like raising their hands to vote on things you mm -hmm. know um so yeah i mean i understand why it comes up can you uh share with us who the photo is on your guitar strap and a couple of your favorite scribbles on that These, or your guitar uh, this is actually my friend cameron's guitar so i don't know who the girl is <laughs> i don't know what the scribble i think these are his lyrics my friend cameron mcgill is a really good songwriter he's playing keyboard in margaret right now He's kind enough to let me use his guitar, so... Okay. I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's not even personal. Yeah. That's kind <laughs> no. of funny. And can you explain to people who uh, haven't heard the story how the Animal Not Animal 2 released uh, <coughs> things happen? It's an right. interesting thing that I don't know I've seen anyone do before. Um, yeah, well, we signed Epic Records, which was kind of questionable idea number one questionable idea number two was to make a record that sounded like Animal as our major label debut. So they got it and they weren't crazy about it. It's a pretty slow record and all this business. And um, So I don't know, for a couple weeks it was this whole like, well they don't want to put it out or they want you to go back in the studio and all this. Um, and I flew to New York. I think our manager at the time said, well the ship's probably sailed but that's alright, it happens. It's like, it happens every now and then. I'll probably shelve it if you guys don't want to go back in and record. So I flew there at like 4 a.m., drunk on wine, and um, yelled at people over there that I knew pretty well. And I think I threatened to leak it myself or something and said that there's no, no point in shelving it because this isn't 1976. Like, it's going to get out, and then you're just going to lose all that money. So blackmail got it out and so there was just some compromise where they said okay well there's enough stuff that we'd recorded that they were fond of or, or liked better than that record so they we said okay well you, you can sequence it however you want and put it on a cd as long as you kind of leave ours be um <clears throat> so it didn't end up working that well but it was our way of it not was an interesting idea and i was curious i tried to search online <coughs> which one sold more oh not animal by far yeah i mean i don't think animal ever came out on cd and stuff like mm -hmm. that so um, and it didn't even come out on iTunes till three or four months after it had gotten quote unquote released. Okay. So it that one didn't have much of a chance, but um, yeah, I don't know. You live and you learn, I guess. 